Hello, my name is René Weber. Let us talk about the question, who will protect your backups, especially against ransomware? First of all, let's start with ransomware. Ransomware is actually one of the worst attacks that you can find in the moment. Because it is not a target attack, it is not targeted against especially your company, but it's a distributed attack. So it's just by spreading the ransomware, you could be a victim without even being a target. That means that more and more companies are affected by a ransomware attack. The sad record is actually that we got around 20,000 new um, open holes or vulnerabilities which can be used for a ransomware attack. Furthermore, the whole COVID-19 pandemic opens up a lot of other holes. For example, remote workplaces, um, working from home, um, connecting to the company where the company has to open up a lot of different protocols, a lot of different well, gates to the company to allow access from outside. Which also means that bring your own device also extends because you work from home, probably you even use your home um, mobile phone, your own PC, and so a lot of other components come into the whole infrastructure which can open up holes. Well, in the end, what we find is, or what we see is, that not even the, not only the ransomware attacks increase, but also the targeted attacks, which are combined or bundled together with the ransomware. First of all, let's have a look at the cost that is um, attached to ransomware. What we can see is that the highest cost is generated by the downtime, the downtime that you're forced to do when ransomware attack happens. Which means all of your infrastructure is encrypted, you cannot work with your infrastructure anymore or your data is encrypted, so the company has to stop. For sure it depends on the company itself. So if we're talking about automotive, for example, where all the machines stop, where nothing works anymore about big IT supermarkets or things like this, where you can get all the cash system down and no customer can be um, or can, can buy devices anymore, which can generate a very, very high price in the downtime itself. So in the end, we talk about an average of $283,000 only generated by the downtime that is caused by a ransomware attack. Well, and the targeted attack is for sure something that generates more money. As an attacker, my target is always to generate money, to get money from the company. So I can spread ransomware and hope that many of them have to pay or will pay. But I can also find a very specific company and attack it. Attack it if it is in critical infrastructure means that I will generate a lot more money and the effort is worth it. So let's have a look how the ransomware works and how the targeted attack works. And in the end, how to get secured against both of them. To do that, I will start to paint three different areas, which is first of all the infrastructure, then we got our backup software and the backup infrastructure or the backup storage. And we will try to find out where these can be attacked. So where is the point of attack for the infrastructure? How can it go over to the backup software into the backup storage? And how can it destroy all of my data at once? First of all, let's create an infrastructure. The infrastructure is um, set up with some PCs in this case. We got a virtual machine infrastructure. We got um, a filer here and some hardware machine. So just a mix. That mix has something in common. All of them, in this case, um, communicating via the Active Directory. So we got a global user, global user management. Um, for sure to make everything easier because nobody wants to create users on each machine for each single user. Um, but in the end, we got probably a weak point that we can see later. Furthermore, we got many different kind of data. On the PC, probably we only got temporary data because the data that is needed for the company is stored on the filer, on the hardware, on the virtual machine. 
On the virtual machine, we got data that is changing all the time. We got a very high movement inside because we got databases that are changing each nanosecond or something. And on the hardware, probably, we got an archive where we change data barely. We just add another data and um, keep that growing. So, but in the end, all of these may have something in common, which means we want to create a backup. It's not only against ransomware. Please always keep in mind that there are possible other data losses as well. So you can lose data by deleting data, actually. A delete, a mistake, so to say. You can lose data by a fire or water, some elementary things. But you can also, for sure, um, lose data by an attack, by a ransomware attack, by a bad attack from inside the company, and things like this. So the backup always helps you to get out of a bad situation. So for sure, you need a very good backup software. Again, many infrastructures, we can see the communication going down to the backup software via the Active Directory as well. Because in the end, the administrator wants to get access to all the machines, including the backup software for sure, to make things easier. And then we start to distribute our data. So what kind of targets do we have? First of all, we got the possibility to store the data internally in the backup um, storage or in the backup server itself, or probably via direct attached disk, a block storage or something like that. The big advantage here is that it is very easy to get that very fast because you can just add the proper disk and you generate speed. The disadvantage may probably be that it is completely administratable via the server it is running on. So, which means I can format the disk, I can delete all the data very easily. To separate the management and the access for writing data and reading data, you could also go to a NAS device, which means it is addressed via the network, it is attached to the network, and you can um, write and um, read data via SMB, NFS, and protocols like this. In that case, I also see many times that the connection is done via the Active Directory user, probably a service user for the Active Directory that is created in the global um, address book. And it is attached to the backup software, maybe directly mapped as a network drive or attached as a UNC path to the backup software itself. Then the next one we could add is a tape library or what we nowadays use, a virtual tape library. So the tape library or virtual tape library, let's call it the air gap device, offers a very, very big advantage, which means you can take the media out, set it offline, get an air gap. So no matter who attacks your infrastructure, this one is not reachable because it's offline and it's even ejected and somewhere in a vault or somewhere on the shelf. Big advantage for the backup infrastructure and another big advantage is that it can be managed very easily. So the backup software can set the devices online, can set them offline, can actually eject them or enable them for eject or unlock them, so to say, and can also re-import them if they are inserted into the device. And in the last instance, we take an object store, in this case, via S3, where you store data over another protocol, in this case HTTPS, and with a dedicated user here. So we got a special access key and a secret key to address this object store with its, with its own buckets. So let's take that infrastructure and let's get the ransomware on it. First of all, we start with the ransomware only. So Let's assume that one of our PCs is attacked and is infected. So the ransomware spreads. The ransomware spreads to this PC, and now it depends a little bit on what kind of rights the user has. If we assume that user who opens up the ransomware email or opens up the bad website has a lot of privileges, like for example the administrator, for sure he can infect a lot of other machines the virtual infrastructure, the filer, the hardware, but also the backup server, the backup software probably, 
and therefore also all of the attached devices like the local storage, the NAS storage. But usually now it ends because the ransomware does not talk tape and the ransomware does not talk S3 yet. So at that point, as an administrator, I would find out, oh man, my infrastructure got encrypted, so what is my way out of it? The one possibility is get the data from the object store. If it is on premise, it may be better. If it is in the cloud, it may be, well, quite expensive and may take a while. So probably the virtual tape library or tape, whatever air gap device you got, even if it is still in the tape library, may be my option to restore data. But now let's have a look at the targeted attack in combination with the ransomware. Because that is what we see nowadays, rising. We start with the same infrastructure and we get our virus in or our attacker in at that, at that point. We get our attacker in, in this case. So the attacker, first of all, tries to discover all the machines, tries to get rights, to get access to your infrastructure, to somehow get an administrator. Because if you're an administrator, there are no fences anymore and no walls. So he will start to sniff, start to find, probably install some key loggers, start to get information about the infrastructure, read files, um, find out more about the users and probably in the end you will be able to get the so-called golden ticket, so the key to your infrastructure, which is the Active Directory. So he infects the whole Active Directory and as soon as it is infected, he can walk any way he wants. So first of all, um, he will have a look at the backup infrastructure and for sure make sure that you cannot restore any data anymore. So let's start with the backup infrastructure, encrypt the backup server or delete data, delete the local storage, delete the network attached storage over the network. And now the big advantage of the management possibilities of the tape libraries get a disadvantage. Because at that point he can load all of the tapes that are still in the tape library, erase them and Therefore, get rid of all your data. The only thing left now is the physically ejected tape, so the real air gap media. And the S3 storage, but to be honest, if he gets access to all the machines, if he is the administrator, I'm sure he will also find out the ID and the secret key for your S3 connection or your object store connection. Or he could even go over the backup software and just delete all the data or also use the management path and just delete the bucket. So in the end, the infrastructure is gone, nearly, the backup infrastructure. So um, the next step is to infect the whole basic infrastructure, get all of this infected, get all of this encrypted. And then in the end, you only got one tape probably left to restore your data. And now the big question is how old is that tape? Well, let's have a look how the backup infrastructure can be secured and can be made much better to protect your data even against attacks and against ransomware. First of all, we take the same infrastructure again and the first thing that I would advise is get rid of the Active Directory user in your backup infrastructure, like for example to the NAS device, use a dedicated user for that and make sure that there is no open UNC path that is directly mapped to your backup system so that even a ransomware does not directly walk over all the networks or all the network drives that are mapped and infect them, but that the NAS storage is connected via UNC, UNC path to the backup software. So that makes sure that an automatic ransomware does not instantly infect your NAS storage. Nevertheless, there's another, there's another point. The next thing is, if we got that attacker, that attacker is in your backup software and he attacks your NAS device, which means he finds the UNC path in your backup software, he finds out about the user, he can 
um, attach or map the network drive directly, um, walk to it and start the leading data. Then we want to make sure that probably he made a lead data and for him it feels like he's deleting data, but we still keep data on the NAS device itself. That is what most administrators already do in, for example, their virtual machine infrastructure. Using snapshots to protect a certain state, then for example do the update of the machine and if the update fails you can go back to the last snapshot, if it does not fail you can just delete the snapshot and go on. We use that feature in our hardware by rotating these snapshots. So we create one snapshot each hour, for example, can be configured, and keep them for up to 30 days. Which means no matter who deletes data on your NAS device, and no matter what's happening to your NAS device, if it is a ransomware or a real deletion or a modification in any other way, you always got a window of up to 30 days to restore your data. So you can just go in there and say, hey, Something happened. Let's go back to last Tuesday, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Everything was fine, so let's pick that specific date. And you can restore all your data. It's a very important point because, to be honest, when you remember the slide that I showed you before, where we only got one tape as an offsite media and offline or yeah, get media to restore from. The conclusion would be that you gotta write an air gap media each day or even better each hour to be secure against um, attackers and to take it out each hour then or each day, which generates a huge amount of tapes or a huge amount of air gap of media um, just for making your infrastructure secure. So it's way better and way easier to use the NAS function functionality of the continuous snapshots to protect your data on the NAS device already and to, yeah, let's say to, to get rid of this daily task of writing air gapable media, but to, for example, do it only every two weeks or at the end of these 30 days that are secured on the NAS device itself. So we got that continuous snapshots over here. We got the same thing on the object store. So you can also protect the object store for up to 30 days. And the basic thing is here that um, we mentioned it here, there's also something that is called object locking in the S3 layer. That is something that our hardware does not support. We do something else, we do the bucket locking. So we don't lock single files, we lock the whole bucket instead. So whatever happens to any file in there, you can always restore an old state and get back on, the, on your feet. So the last thing is the virtual tape library and for sure the only way to get that secure is to take it out to do the actual air gap. But if all of these work together, the air gap can be done once a month because up to then the NAS device stores your data in a very secure way, not attackable because deletions can be reverted and even not attackable because the management is separate. So you got an own management network, a dedicated user, which is not in the Active Directory to make it even harder to get in. And then to even make it impossible to get in, we use a two-factor authentication for that management port. So nobody can get in, can manage the system except you. Nobody can modify or enable or disable the continuous snapshot feature and therefore nobody can delete your data actually. That is how our system works. So when the virus comes in now, he can attack everything or the attacker comes in, he can attack everything, delete data, except the NAS device because it protects itself, except the air gap media, which can be a silent brick, and except the object store, which can also be protected via the um, continuous snapshot feature via the bucket locking itself and it is protected via a separate management network, a separate management access with a two-factor authentication. So we are talking about the so-called silent brick here. On the left side I'll show you the silent brick flash which comes with um, high-performing SSD flash drives inside. 
it's always 12 discs in one container to get a very high performance and also a very high security. Security means that you can even lose up to three discs in the NAS device without having data loss. And in the virtual tape device you can use, you can lose up to four drives, physical drives without, without having data loss. And on the right side I show you another device which is the so-called Silent Brick DS. And the Silent Brick DS comes with 12 times three and a half inch discs. It's not made for transportability, but for high capacity, which means up to 192 terabyte per shelf or per unit. So these are three different Silent Bricks, but to be honest, each of these bricks could be used for any other purpose as well. So we could also use the Silent Brick DS on the right side for the NAS device as well and could also use a flash drive for the DS3 layer, so always depending on the needs. And all of these can be combined in one big system, in one so-called Silent Brick system. So here we talk about five transportable bricks and two static bricks, two Silent Brick DS um, bricks, which offer a capacity um, of up to 192 terabytes each. So we're talking about two times 192 terabytes here plus five times 24 terabyte capacity, which can be addressed in a modular way. So you can always select which one should be um, used as a tape today for transportation or probably tomorrow as an S device and probably the day after tomorrow as an S3 object store. So very high modularity we got the system ransomware proof via the continuous snapshot protection. We got the air gap, so you can always take media out. You can even create a copy of the S3 layer and take it out. So you got an air gapped bucket and put it into a shelf. And we're talking about a system that can start very, very small with two terabytes, which are small for a backup infrastructure or archival infrastructure and can grow up to five petabyte at the moment. And optionally, we even offer a hardware worm protection on a per brick level, which means you can get a specific brick which is protected on the hardware level against modification, against deletion. So even me, as a developer, I could get into the system, but I could not delete a single bit. Well, thanks for your attention. Oh, um, by the way, if you are wondering how that restoring data from a continuous snapshot works, have a look at that video. In that video, I show you how to restore data that has been attacked from a continuous snapshot from somewhere in the past.